But uh, somebody else that was a salesman, he was trying to sell anything he could at that point, especially himself, he did that you job. gave a start to in the industry was Eric Bischoff. Oh, you have to it's bring that your up. fault. It is. How did, he, how did he come to you? How did he get started? And where did he go from there? He came to us and he wanted to, he was selling ninja suits for kids out of his trunk. And the little things you'd... And the stars, the fighting stars. The so he, he came in and he wanted to buy time on there. To somebody, he didn't have any money to buy the time. So really, I don't know what he was really doing there. But Vince had taken our last announcer and we were doing interviews and we had nobody to do interviews. And Eric was talking and Dad thought he was a pretty good talker. He said, uh, why don't you guys take him in there and work with him for a couple of days, see what you can do with him. And that's how he ended up doing our interviews. Wow. Then Jim Hurd, the genius he was, he came up and wanted to work with us, but he didn't want Vern involved. Now, that's a good way to present it to Vern, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want I mean, you involved. I don't, I don't want you. You know too much about wrestling. I don't want you yeah. involved. Well, Hurd was a master of diplomacy. Oh, my God. You he know. was stupid. So we had the meeting with him, and my dad was saying, he said, can you believe this son of a bitch? I, I mean, I can't believe this. So Hurd goes back, and, about, and, and Bischoff, we're, we're near the end, you know, and Bischoff, God, I, you know, I got to find work somewhere. So Hurd calls me, and he said, hey, I'll pay you X amount, X amount of dollars under the table to put our TV show on in place of yours. And I said, pardon me? I, I said, you're going to do what? <laughs> he said, I'm going to pay you, and then I'm going to give you a contract with us to put our show on in place of your show in Minneapolis. I said, so Jim, what you're telling me I'm going to do is I'm going to buck my dad and put our show in, and then I'm going to have a contract with you. I just want to get and this straight. And basically run opposition yeah. to yourself. Right. Is, yeah. is that what you're saying? He said, yes. And I said, fuck you. <laughs> and I hung up. So then um, Bischoff came to me, and he said, i got to get a job. Can you get me a job in the, in the industry? And I, thought, well, I called her. I said, Jim, I'm not going to put my dad's show. I'm not going to put your show on. I'm not calling for that. But we got this kid, Bischoff. And he wants to be an announcer. Can you use him down there in any shape, way, or form? So they took him down there. That's how he got the job. And then later on, he was able to get people to manufacture letters of recommendation for him, a, saying that, uh, because I talked to actually one of them who shall remain nameless, but he's a guy that had worked around the business for quite a period of time, and he at the time was working in your office, and you can probably think of the name in your head, but... He wrote a letter saying that Eric Bischoff was responsible for creative and this and that in the AWA in return for Bischoff said, you write me this letter and I get this job. I'm going to bring you down here and I'm going to hire you and blah, blah, blah. Well, and they Mike did and he Mike didn't. Shields or... Uh, I didn't say that or, name. No. I did not say that name one time that I said that That's it was Mike Shields can, that used to work for Jerry Jarrett and Nick well, Lewis in Tennessee. Other guy, and, the other one was Joe Kupik who was a young guy, and Joe said Eric promised him a job down there, and he never Well, and see, there was more than one. Right. There, there was, was more than one. Yeah. So. There was actually more than two, because I never heard of Joe Kupik, and I still uh, know a couple. But anyway, yeah, you know, falsifying records. That was Bischoff's M.O. I, that's why I always said that he convinced the TBS executives that he's the one that served second course to Last Supper, and that's why they wet, let him be the head waiter. So. Well, you know, I hate to... I hate to uh, you know, to really talk bad about anybody or put them down, especially on a video like this, but I guess it's about time. Sure, go ahead. All right. So we got Eric the job down there. Bill Watts called me when Bill took over from Herd. He said, hey, I'd like you to come down and, and uh, work for us. He said, here's, here's, here's where I think you can help us. He said, none of my guys can see the long range. They're all used to booking weekly territories. And with pay-per-views and that, you have to look down the road, and that's what Vern did best, and I'm sure he taught you because I've been around you. I said, yeah, I can do that. And he said, okay, I'm going to get you a contract. Why don't you come down and met with him? They gave me a contract, X amount of dollars, and I said, well, Bill, that's not enough. I said, here's what I would like. I would like, if the ratings come up, I want X amount of dollars for every point that comes up. Every pay-per-view that comes up, I want X amount of dollars, and so on and so forth. He said, okay. So my lawyer wrote it up. He hired me. I brought him down. The first day I'm in a meeting with 
uh, Jim Ross, Bill Watts, uh, uh, Bob... Uh, Bob Dew. Bob Dew. And uh, somebody else was in there. And they said, well, okay. And in, in the meantime, Bischoff had called me two days before I'm going to start down. He says, hey, what do you think has to be done down here to change this thing around? I said, well, what are they trying to do? And if you're trying to compete with McMahon, you guys are way off base. There's a lot of it. You have to do, here's what you have to do. You have to get a new look on TV. You have to do this, this, and this. So I get down there and have the meeting with Bill. And he says, what do we need to do? And I said, well, Bill, first we've got to turn I mean, if you're going to compete with him, you've got to get the big look. You got you got some talent here. Now you need the big look, and you got to figure out if this is what you guys really want to do. And uh, we went and blah 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 about this and that. And I said you have to have that long range production. He's produced, uh, you know, your tape reviews at the end of the year where you're going with it. He said, can you do that? I said, yeah, I'll do it. Okay, lay me out, lay it out, and bring it back tomorrow. So I laid out a whole year for him, brought it back to him. They all looked at it, and I said, the other thing you have to do, if you're, go you're going national and you want to you get over in Minneapolis and you want to get over in the Midwest, Jim Ross, you've got, you've got to tone it down. People in the Midwest can't stand that twanging, screaming of yours. <laughs> well, that really sit over well with Hey, me. now! To, to this day, he won't talk to me. But... I, I, I flail at you, sir, on behalf of all of us Southerners. So I kind of, you know, really laid it out to everybody what, what I thought should be done. Maybe it's not the right way, but this is, if you're asking me, this is what you have to do. And really, you can't compete with McMahon. Uh, he does it better than anybody. You have to find your own niche, and I think I've got an idea for that. But I'm not going to, we'll, we'll go down the road with that one. So in the meantime, two days later, Bill says, oh, shit, they got this. They're trying to hire an executive producer here. I said, well, you want me to go down there and interview for it? He said, they got Bischoff down there. They got Tony Schiavone. They have uh, Joe Petticino and uh, David Crockett. And I said, well, the executive producer, aren't they going to call it? No, no, I call the shots. So about four or five days later, we're, we're in South Carolina. Bill comes walking in. He's got my contract. He said, I wouldn't sign this. I said, why? He said, I get fired today. Bischoff's your new boss. And I said, Bischoff's our boss? I said, you got to be kidding me. Eric had till, taken everything I wrote. I told him on the phone, wrote it down, and that was his presentation to him. I can believe that. So now they had let Dusty off for a month. They were letting him off for a month, and then Mike Graham and I were supposed to book, book the stuff, give Dusty a break. So we're in there, and you know, Turner, you had like seven, eight, nine shows to do. Yeah. We're laying out shows, and Bischoff comes walking in. He says, there, guys, there's your contract. Just sign it right down there. And I said, well, I want to take it home this weekend and have my lawyer look at it. I said, has anything changed? No, same contract. I said, Eric, we're right in the middle of TV. I'm not going to sign the contract until I take it home and look at it. I said, you know, get, get out of here. Yeah. So he left, came back five, six times. And Mike and I are losing him. We're ready to kill him. You know, we're right in the middle of this thing. He throws it down. I said, has it changed? No. I said, okay, boom, and I signed the freaking thing. So the TV ratings start coming up. Pay-per-view increases a little bit. So I said, hey, Eric, where's, my, where's our bonuses? Mike and I have bonuses coming in our contracts. Oh, you don't have any bonuses? I said, what do you mean? I looked at it. There was nothing in there. I found out later, he took all our stuff and put it in his contract. <laughs> well, at least somebody got it. Then. Somebody so, got it. You know. Right? So he's got me once. So we're driving back from South Carolina or somewhere. He says, Greg, how can we get this thing going? I said, Eric, right now you guys are trying to do what McMahon's doing, and you can't do it as well as him. The only thing that's to give you a jump start here is bring Hogan in here. You got flair, bring Hogan in here. Well, I don't know how to get a hold of him. How do I get a hold of him? I said, well, I can call him. I'll get him in here. But if I get Hogan in here for you, I want part of his pay-per-view. I want a little percentage off that when it goes up. I want some of his merchandising, and I want a little piece of his contract. You get that in writing from Bill Shaw, and I'll get him. Two days later, he comes back to me. He says, can you get Hogan? I said, I've talked to him. He'll listen. Did you get the deal from Shaw? Bill's going out of town Friday. He'll get it to you before Friday. This was like on a Wednesday. I said, well, I better have it Friday or I'm not going to call him. And he said, um, all right. So then the following Monday, I come into the office. 
there's a big sign. They welcome Hogan. They flew down to him on Friday and signed him. <laughs> and I got nothing. Well, you, got a, you got a big sign that said, Welcome Home Hulk. So what now, you got? now I'm fucking furious. I'm ready to kill this son of a bitch. So they're, they're, they're moving along. And, you know, right away we lay out the first pay-per-view for Hogan and Flair, and they want to put them in a cage. And I said, Jesus, guys, you don't need it. Here's the two biggest stars of the, of the last how many years? Yeah. All you need, do some publicity in USA newspaper like they do with boxing. Put their pictures in there, and here's the big match. Then they want Sherry Martell in there, and they end up doing the cage. Everything that I said not to do, they did. And uh, so now a good friend of mine who ran the Goodwill Games for Turner Broadcasting, Jack, um, Jack Kelly, calls me up. He says, hey, come on down here a minute. I need some help with something. So I go down the hall, and I talk to Jack. He said, Turner just lost his TV in Russia. He said, uh, do you know anybody? And I said, well, yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. Uh, Vern and I just two weeks ago met with Alexander Karelin. Karelin was the Olympic gold medal winner for, the, uh, for four, four, the, four in a row. The experiment. The experiment. Right? You yeah, got it, yeah. yeah. Six, six, five, six, six, three percent body fat. We were at the University of Minnesota. He's going to train with the weights. He's going to do bench presses. He lays down. He starts bench press. So how many is he going to do? And the guy says, 15 minutes with 300 pounds. He times his bench presses yeah. rather than count 15 minutes, 300 pounds. Okay. And we're watching this. Then he takes Michael Foy and the two Morgan brothers, who are all three on the Olympic team. He takes on all three of them and pins all three of them in about, I don't know, 45 seconds. Jeez. And these are guys that are going to wrestle in the Olympics. So I said, to, I, I went and met with Hogan. I said, here, they need help. They want to get... Turner wants his TV back in Russia. I can get him on. We can sign this Karelin, but you'll have to work with him. And we'll train him, but I would like to put him on TV for a year before we do this and really get him established. And he can beat Sting and he can beat Flair and beat all these guys. We'll build him for this thing. We'll do three pay-per-views. We'll do one in Russia, never been done there. We'll do one back here, and we'll do a third one, the neutral one, in, in Japan. Yeah. Okay, and I know for a fact Vince, his interest was peaked in the experiment in the ninety six, ninety seven time period because he talked about him a number of times, and Bruce was all fired up for him. Well, he wouldn't go with anybody but Vern or I to train him. Yeah, well, this this yeah. was after it was this a moot point right. that he wasn't going to do yeah. any any wrestling though. But so um, so anyhow, so then I, Bischoff calls me into the office and. Um, he says, hey, what can we do to really change this? I mean, we got Hogan, we got Flair. We've done. I said, Eric, here's the easiest thing, okay? Where are your ratings bad? Where are they bad? Let's take a look at the map. Okay, Midwest, South, okay? There's where you're weak. Talk to Vern. Give him a, give him, pay him for the AWA, whatever that number is. NWA. If you have to pay somebody, pay. You got the AWA, the NWA. Hogan, champion AWA, Flair champion of the NWA. There's your, there it is. Here's your strength. When you run a card in Denver, you put two or three matches from the AWA and two or three matches from the NWA on, the, the, on super, the card. And the super cards and, that they never and, got to and see. And now you've got, you got, your, you got your WrestleMania, something Ho uh, McMahon cannot do. You can have crossovers. Flair started in the AWA. He can jump over here. An invasion angle of sorts. Right. Hmm. He, you know, you don't have to. He, he takes me into the people I presented to him. He said, it'll never work. Two days later, <laughs> I went home. He calls me up, and he said, uh, Hey, there's, I'm packing to go to Orlando for TV. He says, there's no need to come to TV. And I said, what do you mean there's no need to come to TV? He said, you're done. I said, what do you mean I'm done? He went behind my back. I heard about, I heard about this Russian and what you want to do. How could you go behind my back? I said, well, let's see, Eric. You fucked me twice. Should I go for a third time? <laughs> I mean, why would I come to you with and this? He's, he's awful big on firing people on the phone, isn't he? Right. Ole, Austin, you. So I flew down to Atlanta, and I was going up on that 14th floor, and honest to God, I was going to throw him out that window. That's how I was so freaking mad. I, was, I, would have, I, would have, I would have knocked the shit out of him. But anyhow, that's how it ended. Then they come back, and they do the WCW and the NWO. But I didn't tell them how to... 
They couldn't keep it running. They had McMahon on the ropes, but they yeah. didn't know how to keep it going. And that's because Hogan and Nash and uh, what's the other big kid? Hall. Hall are calling, kind of calling the shots, and Flair, and they don't, they know how to get themselves established, but they don't know how to bring around these other guys yeah. to help with the card, make the card better, and prepare them to take over. They became gone. the other guy. Everybody else on the card became the cannon fodder to right. keep this oh, to keep yeah. them going, rather than helping getting the other guy. That's when they had Del Wilkes down there. They should have taken him and made a big star out of him. But they didn't know, it's not that they didn't want to do it, they didn't know how to do it. 